Well, good afternoon to all. I am Matteo Vinci from OGS Trieste Italy, and I will present you enlarging the ammonet chemistry focus with the EU Marine Litter Data Challenge. Here an outline of my presentation. We will see a, a rationale. Then we will see Marine Strategy Framework Directive Descriptor 10 requirements, litter protocols and formats, litter hindrances, the European Marine Litter Data Management, the database content, and some use cases. Since 2008, Marine Strategy Framework Directive is aiming to achieve a good environmental status by 2020 for our seas and oceans. This work is described by the Annex 1 of the Directive with 11 qualitative descriptors. Since 2009, there is an ongoing challenge to use the EMODNET as a sustaining infrastructure unifying European environmental information. As probably most of you already know, the EMODNET is composed by seven thematic portals coordinated by a central portal. We specifically are the Chemistry One and we are dealing with the following Marine Strategy Framework Directive descriptors. The descriptor 5 for eutrophication, 8 for contaminants, 9 for seafood contaminants, and finally the 10th for marine litter. For this descriptor we have a specific focus on beach litter, seafloor litter, and floating microlitter. In our experience the complexity and heterogeneity of the information is growing going from the fifth descriptor until the tenth, because that are fragmented and highly heterogeneous. There are different sampling protocols, formats, reporting units, that are often divided in different databases, and in some cases data are not accessible. Let's see some more details about the Marine Strategy Framework Directive requirements about the descriptor 10 that is dealing with properties and quantities of marine litter data do not cause harm to the coastal and marine environment. There are some commission decisions for floating microlitter, beach litter and seafloor litter that are asking for trends in the amounts, distribution and where possible also composition and source of this information and these items. These are important and interesting points and on a first view seems not uh, terrible questions, they are not asking the moon, but we have to see better which one is the reality. About the picture on the right, probably most of you already know it, and this is from National Geographic, highlighting quite well the topic that we are describing now. We started our work with an analysis, a first analysis to learn about the available uh, procedures and, and standards available because we didn't want to reinvent the wheel but learn from the uh, previous experience and maybe to make some step further in the European integration of this kind of information. So for the three topics of interest of our project we found that for beach litter there were already existing and consolidated protocols for, uh, from OSPAR, UNEP, UNEP Marling, Italian coding and of course also the technical group on marine litter coding for litter items. For the seafloor litter there were already consolidated protocols for bottom trolling from ISIS, Medits and the Fish Gear project. While for floating micro litter we found that there were a more fragmented and heterogeneous data management experiences. Following this we decided to create a new EMODNET format based on OSPAR to catch all the available information at European level for the beach litter, to create a new EMODNET format based on ISIS format to catch all the available information for the seafloor. Instead, for the floating microliter, we adapted the CData Cloud EMODNET existing data format. The CDIs are used to manage the metadata, while the ODV was adapted to handle the, the litter information, so we created a litter ODV format. The objective is to catch all type of data, providing central submission facilities, encouraging data exchange mechanism, and producing search and display services. 
During this work of acquisition and uh, ingestion of this kind of information, we found also some hindrances in the management for the different topics. And for example, for the beach litter, we found that in some cases data were reported in original language. In some cases, there were missing or ambiguous items reporting, like no specific number, but more than 100 items, for example. There were multiple or, or mixed reference lists used in the same survey. <coughs> missing relevant information like the coordinates for beaches and surveys. And this could be a problem if you want to represent this kind of information in a map with an output. Also, different protocols with different survey parameters like the length. For the seafloor litter, we found that in some cases there were different mandatory units of reporting like count or weight. Mandatory information with different granularity like categories or sub subcategories, so different levels of granularity reported as mandatory information. Different sampling layers used during the surveys. And from the literature, we found that the results are not comparable if are coming from different year, years used. Also here, missing relevant information <coughs> like the coordinates, for example, uh, the latitude, the longitude, or the width of the survey. Instead, for the floating microliter, up to now, we didn't find relevant hindrances. Thanks also to the collaboration and to the communication with partners, data provider, and so on, we overcome uh, several, most of the entrances that we found at the beginning. And so we ingested and did something with this uh, achieved data. For the beach data, we created and populated a relational database, a Postgres database with special capabilities in PostGIS, with tables describing beaches, surveys, animals, items, preference lists, vocabularies and auxiliary, auxiliary lists, and the import logs of the data. While for the seafloor, we build another relational database in Postgres, with always special capabilities as PostGIS, with tables describing the surveys, the holes, the items, the reference lists used, the vocabularies, and the import logs. For the floating microliter, as said before, we use the CDATANET infrastructure, so we manage the metadata using the CDIs and the data with the adapted litter ODB format. <coughs> Starting to talk about the database content, content, we are receiving different kind of formats of litter information from partners, from associations, <coughs> We have great help from our network of NODCs in the formatting this information in the EMODET format. And when we have the right uh, format, we populate our litter database. And after this, we are able to produce some outputs. Up to now, for beach litter, we received data from OSPAR and Marine Conservation Society, data from JRC collection from member states, and also data from EMODET partners and associates. This for a total of 29 countries and for, for 521 beaches. For the seafloor, we received data from ISIS Datras database and Emonet partners for a total of 15 countries and 2064 surveys. While for floating microliter, we received data from partners from four countries with 131 surveys. More data are coming in the next future like the EA Litter Watch database, the Medits and the Fish Gear project, Volvo Ocean Race data, and other data from Emonet partners. Let's start to see some contents and output from our database. Here we have an image showing the distribution of the surveyed beaches, the seafloor surveys, and the floating microliter surveys, where the color legenda is showing you the green dots that are the survey beaches, the green line is for the microliter surveys, while the red line is the seafloors, are the seafloor surveys. Here we have a map showing uh, the distribution of the survey beach, and specifically here there is a distinction of the different 
the different reference lists used to make the surveys in the different beaches. The color legenda is providing you the information about which kind of list was used to survey specific kind of items. Here there are data from 29 countries for 18 years, four marine regions, more, more than 500 beaches, more than 4,000 surveys, and more than 540,000 insertions of litter items. Here an example about an aggregation that we tried to do was the first release of an aggregated map. It was in March 2018. We are still working now to update and to make better outputs. And you can, you can see here a map showing the number of surveys in the European beaches. And this is shown with the color legenda in the map. And also the number of items that were discovered in the beaches. And this is shown as the width, the dim dimension of the circles. Here another map, now for the seafloor litter data. And the interesting point is that the color legenda is showing the different kind of gears used in the trawling surveys to catch the, the litter items, the data. There are data from 15 countries here, from 12 years, more than 2,000 surveys, more than 10,000 holes, 11 different gears used, and more than 24,000 insertions of litter items. And here, an example about the CDI Search and Discovery Service managing the microliter data information, where we have um, surveys from four countries and 131 surveys. The data formats used to collect the litter information are available in our website at the link I links highlighted and will be soon submitted to the Ocean Best Practices as discussed in the last days. There is the chance to access online to the map layers thanks to our viewing service Ocean Browser in the link highlighted in the middle of the slide and that are available through CDI service up to now for beach and microliter, soon also for the, for the seafloor at the link below. Coming now to the use cases, litter data have been used already for some use cases, quite important from our point of view. For example, the European Commission Marine Litter Single Use Plastic Assessment, Beach Litter Baseline and Top 10 Items List done with JRC. And also we are contributing to the revision of the Technical Group of Marine Litter Master List, that is the official European list used to uh, make the surveys of the litter items. This slide to remember that also the ingestion service is helping us to collect this information when the data are coming outside from the normal network of NODCs that are participating in EMONET, we are also using these facilities. I would like to thank all the partners and colleagues that worked hardly in this work with us and uh, thank you for your attention and if you have quest questions. <coughs>